jazz has always been a part of who I am. I believe that um, jazz naturally flows in my blood. I'm from New Orleans, so they say it's something in the water. So that must be accurate or true. Um, although I have always loved jazz, I didn't know the extent or the depths of jazz until I went to Berkeley. Um, I think after learning of that, after learning that there is a such thing as a real book, um, it made me gravitate to it more. So I would say definitely jazz was something that um, I gained way more interest in after experiencing Berkeley, for sure. Conversely, I would have to say that the same genre that I gravitated towards was the same genre that pretty much in intimidated me. Um, yeah, it was it was kind of culture shock to realize that there's a whole book of songs that I needed to learn and a whole style of swing that I didn't understand. So most things that I gravitate to are at first intimidating because I feel like that's the only way to truly grow. People or groups that inspire me as an artist are um, really uh, funk groups and rock groups. Uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, the Doobie Brothers, Steely Dan. Um, you know, back when everyone played a part in music and um, everyone's role was important, I, I really loved bands. Initially, what made me start a presence on social media or start building a presence on social media was um, my realization that um, I didn't want to be in a position where I was constantly hoping that someone would hire me for a tour. Um, I think that in itself was inspiration enough for me to take my own destiny and my own career into my own hands. Um, but even before that, I already had some feelings. Like even when I was on tour, and I was experiencing tour for the first time, I had feelings when I was more involved in production that I should take my career into my own hands as well because I was constantly working with artists and it falling through. Um, and my, my biggest dream is to break artists um, and to help artists build a successful career in the music industry. And I felt like at that time, people were doubting me and not really believing in me. So... It was my way of proving to myself that I have what it takes to do what I dream to do. And who better to start with, honestly, than myself? I think that would be proof enough that I actually do know what I'm talking about. It is important for artists to have good business sense, to keep the market value high. Um, I feel like if we as a collective stand together and keep our market value high, um, it will be it won't be easy to exploit us. Um, and that is something that is heavy on my heart to really talk about with musicians. Um, because just like any other business, whatever you allow to happen to you will happen. You know, as as long as you don't say anything, a closed mouth doesn't get fed, that's a that's a saying. Um, we have to be bold enough to stand for what we believe in and stand at our market value and not settle for any less. So unless you really know business, people will take advantage of you. So take the power to educate yourselves about the industry that you're in. The most logistical advice I can give for anyone who is starting a fan funded page is to stay consistent at it. Um, just like with any other business, you have to consistently promote it. You have to consistently market it. You have to consistently add content. Um, it will not thrive by itself. Maybe at some point you'll have a little bit more leeway, but especially in the very beginning, don't get discouraged if you don't have the numbers that you want initially. Um, because with anything, it takes time. It takes, um, yeah, it takes time. It takes time to build. Um, and anything worth having takes time to build. Um, most things that come fast go just as fast. So never get discouraged if it takes too long because that means that you have longevity. Quality. Um, is it informative? And uh, is it clear? Is the intention clear? 
Um, I think that that is the best advice I could definitely give you. Um, but for any, um, but for everybody, it's a little bit different. You have to really analyze um, your audience and see what they are gravitating towards. What's the most important things that they're paying attention to so you can consistently put that in your videos. For me, it's looking at the camera. For me, it's smiling. For me, it's uh, familiarity. So you just gotta really uh, take time with your audience, analyze your audience, go through your analytics, um, see what what uh, content is most popular and analyze why. It's all critical thinking. Um, so for everyone, it's different. My videos have definitely gone through a strong transition as far as um, audio is concerned. When I first started filming my uh, videos, my cover videos back in 2017, I was filming it straight from my iPhone camera. Since then, I tried to increase the quality of my sound in my videos. And the most essential part for me has been this bad boy right here. This is the Shure SM57. It is what I use for a majority of my drums, including toms, snare drums. Um, yeah, all of my drums, it, it, with the exclusion, um, excluding the uh, bass drum, are all SM57s. It's such a, a great standard microphone that captures the sound so well. 